What's up, Angelo? Uh, this is Brody here. I'm going to give you a quick little tutorial on uh, your question, and I'm going to read that over for you really quick. Uh, you ask, can you maybe explain, or is there a way to, uh, to explain when a group pre-clip or a group post-clip, or how to apply it is what you're, you're asking. Since I've been using both, but I'm not sure when to apply them correctly since they seem pretty similar. And I've read somewhere that it won't affect the key you pulled out of a skin tone for the post-clip one. Uh, let's see, the, the last part of the question with the, the skin tone part, uh, it depends on uh, how you're using it. I'll give you an example, though, on how to use it, alright? So, let's go jump into DaVinci really quick. Alright, so, uh, what I'm gonna do really quick is I'm just gonna give you a brief over overview on how to use group, and then how to use, uh, post-clip and pre-clip, and it's really pretty straightforward. Alright, so, obviously, the first thing that you're gonna wanna do uh, you could obviously clearly tell that the first one is uh, more log, uh, the second one is more Rec. 709, and the third one is more Rec. 709, so cool. So the first thing that you want to do always uh, with uh, color grading is you want to do a color correction first, which means white balance and uh, exposure. Cool. So what I personally like to do is I, I like to have these little lines here. These are broadcast safe standards. I just that's just what I do. It's not, you don't have to do it. It's preference. That's just what I like to do. All right. So all I'm going to do is, uh, create a basic and, oh, and right now I am not using any groups and I'm not using any post clip or pre clip or anything that comes later. All right. So all I'm doing is, uh, raising the exposure, uh, for, uh, for our images. All right. So I feel like that's good enough for, for that image. Uh, actually, let me, uh, get that, uh, saturation in there. And just in case you weren't aware, you want to use the vector scope to make sure that you have proper levels of uh, uh, saturation. Oh, look at that. I could actually go all the way up. Um, actually, I'm going to add another node and raise that saturation up just a little bit. All right, and you don't ever want to really go past this area right here. So I'm going to lower it down just a little bit. All right, so you got that done. I'm going to jump over here. Uh, let's see, saturation looks meh. Whatever. All right, so I'm going to do uh, the exposure again. And exposure looks good over here, good enough. All right, I'm gonna, oh, and by the way, I am matching these all to the same exact, uh, similar uh, exposure levels as if they were part of the same uh, scene. So you get a little uh, color matching lesson here too. All right, so that's good enough. Let's So uh, for a brief color matching uh, using the scopes, this is what I'm gonna do. So let's see, I'm gonna show you exactly where, I, where I'm looking at. Okay, so um, let's see. I'm looking at this this uh, the 768 line right here. I'm gonna try to have these parts of the highlights match throughout the entire timeline, so the three clips. So, in my personal opinion, this part could go up a little bit. So I'm gonna just raise that up slightly. There you go. All right, cool. And it looks decent, not perfect, but close enough. Uh, let me raise that or lower the shadows just a little bit, get it back on the line. Okay, and now that one's pretty good. Yeah, good enough. And let's see, this one's pretty much there. Look at that. Not bad at all. All right. Cool. All right, so pretty much we have our exposure done. And it's it's not perfect, but it's good enough. It, sh it should look relatively uh, the s similar exposures throughout the entire timeline. I'm gonna actually get rid of some of these shadows right there because that's uh, a little too dark for me. All right, so let's get here, there. So, to, uh, in order to get the shadows, uh, obviously you're gonna, actually, let me get this. Let me get, uh, in, in case you didn't know about this, if you select the dropper, you could actually just click on it and boom, see, it tells you exactly where the shadows are. Pretty cool, huh? But uh, I, I know just through experience that I'm gonna go just a little bit further. And let's see, let's go for reference, see what their shadows look like. They're a little spread apart. So if you notice that they're not crushed, they're just spread apart a little bit right there. So that looks good enough for me. It's, it's good enough. 
All right. So we should have relatively similar uh, exposures. Obviously, this guy right here, <coughs> it's indoors. So it's going to be quite different compared to the outdoors. Outdoors. But if you notice that these darks, uh, in theory, what you should do is match it to some somewhere relatively like that. But it's that's nitpicking, to be honest. So you don't have to do that. All right. So uh, we are under assumption that the exposure is uh, matching throughout the entire timeline, which is pretty good. All right. So the next thing you want to do, obviously, is you're going to want to do a white balance. So what I personally like to do, this is the easiest method. And like uh, all you do is go to the parade scopes. And you are going to match what I'm looking at right now is this part right here. This part of the green, this part of the red, this part of the blue. And notice how uh, the, the blue is a little bit higher. So you have to kind of compensate for that. So uh, I only do up, down, left, right movements. So I'm going to match that a little bit. See how that's a little bit blue? <laughs> see? So let's see. I'm going to go left and just get that a bit. A little bit like that and yeah that's good enough for now <clears throat> all right so that's uh, pretty much white balanced uh, let's see and this one obviously you could tell it's uh, definitely needs a white balance treatment so I'll, what I'm gonna be looking at is uh, this part this part try to match them up down left right movements And yeah, it's good enough. Uh, the whites look white. All right. So this one, look at that. Red Epic did a great job in getting a good Rec 709. So I'm looking at these little blobs right here. I'm going to match those. And I'm having a little bit of a hard time. What's going on here, Charlie? All right. That looks good to me. All right, so we have three white balanced images, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I have this clip selected and I have this clip, uh, uh, I, I did a, I held shift and click. So that selected all the, the clips. And now I'm going to add into a new group and I'm going to call it, uh, I don't know, just timeline. And... Okay, so now we have a we have our basic color correction and uh, uh, our color correction, white balance, and exposure across the timeline, so which is good. And so the next thing now to get onto your question, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start doing pre clip and post clip. All right, so what we ended up doing in the very beginning is we ended up doing a. Uh, uh, color matching uh, throughout the clips. So now what we're going to do is pretty much the same thing, just that the, the, the corrections are going to be applied across uh, all three clips while just pretty much doing one correction. So I'm going to choose group pre-clip. And what this is going to do is I'm gonna, all I'm going to do with this one is adjust global expo exposure. I already kind of like the, the white balance. I might actually increase... Uh, the reds in there and the, the, the temp temperature wise, but okay. So check this out. I, I'm going to do this with this guy. So I'm going to call, uh, cancel that out for, uh, just so I could, uh, um, just for demonstration purposes. Okay. And, uh, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to apply, actually, I'm going to have that open just so you can see what happens. So if you notice, uh, you're going to see all the, the, the changes uh, be made throughout all the clips and everything. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to, okay. So the first thing that goes through my mind is uh, with pre and post clip or with pre clip, what I'm going to do is uh, just adjust the exposures and just the white balance. That's it. That's literally all I'm going to do. So to answer your question, pre clip, what is pre clip for? All I personally use it for is global uh, exposure and white balance adjustments, and that is it. Literally, that's it. So the first thing that comes to my mind is this needs a lot more contrast, correct? Yeah, it does. Way more. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to pretty much just get this as cool looking as I can. I 
Let's see. I'm going to add a little bit of warmth to the temperature. Uh, just a little bit. And if you notice, it applies it to the entire timeline. You notice it more in this clip. Uh, just happened to do that. Let's see. I want to... Let's see. Where am I at with the vectors? Eh. Okay. All right. So I'm actually going to get rid of some of the uh, warmness just a little bit. Just a touch. Okay, so in theory, what we did is uh, we just ended up um, uh, doing a little bit of uh, a white balance and exposure applied to all the clips. All right, so now the next thing, and I'm not going to make this pretty at all, uh, is the, the post clip. All right, so what the post clip is for is literally the same thing. You could honestly use it for any group application that you want. But what I personally do and most people do is you use the stylized effect uh, to be applied across the entire timeline. So because what you ended up doing is uh, uh, adjusting the exposures and uh, you ended up uh, doing you, you ended up matching every single clip uh, with exposure and white balance and all that. So in theory, with post uh, with post clip, you should be able to apply a, a, a stylized effect and have it look good or decent. Uh, within reason uh, across the entire timeline. That's literally all it's for. So what is group post clip for? Uh, just a group application for uh, for a stylized look or effect. So what I'm going to do is uh, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to make it ugly and just, just put a lot of green on there or whatever. And, uh, and if you notice, uh, pretend this is like I actually took time and made a good stylized effect, but it's, it's not going to look good because these are completely different scenes and they're just completely different feels. So I'm going to use a really horrible example, but uh, just nasty greens. And uh, if you notice, uh, it's going to have a relatively similar feel to every single clip because we already went through the trouble of white balancing and matching every single clip uh, down to the universal exposure with the pre-clip. So if you notice, like, uh, the highlights are uh, have, have that little tinge of uh, uh, green in the highlights. Tinge of green. Tinge of green. It's all the same thing. So that, that in a nutshell is exactly how you use... Uh, pre-clip and post-clip and if you want to get a little crazy and uh just add uh if you go to clip again you could start adjusting everything uh just and it'll only affect the single clip uh once you go into group pre-clip or post-clip then you're gonna end up seeing uh, uh the global adjustments to uh, whatever clip is in the group all right so hope this helped take care